So welcome to part two of Mercedes R107 bulkhead rust. In this video, I'm gonna focus more on the central compartment of the bulkhead, what goes on there. But before I do that, let me just touch on something that I think I may have forgotten to mention in the last video, and that is how to actually remove the cosmetic cover from the outer plenum chambers. So this cover's loose on the car. Normally you would have a plastic rivet in each of these holes along the front here, holding it in place to the scuttle. You also see them screwed on metal rivets or held on with like blind plastic clips that you can just pull off with pliers. If you are going to look at a car, particularly with a private vendor, you may not feel comfortable asking if you can drill out the rivets. So another thing you can do, which is by no means definitive, but it's certainly better than nothing, is just to pour some water through the grill here such that it falls into the plenum chamber below. And if it then flows into the footwell, you've obviously got a hole in the bottom of the plenum chamber. If all is well, the footwell should remain dry and you should just see the water that has found its way through the passage under here and through that hole there. It should then drain out underneath the car Kind of in the middle near the transmission. If you are taking the cover off though, obviously remove whatever fasteners are on the front here, either by drilling or unscrewing, and then you'll normally find it is held very slightly in place by the windscreen chrome trim. Now the trim on this car is, is, is loose, but normally the trim is held in place by these embedded clips around the perimeter of the windscreen but if you get a plastic trim tool or something like that and just very gently get it in between the gap don't use a metal tool because you might scratch it. it's very easy to scratch just lift the trim up, up slightly it doesn't need to actually be released from the clip it just needs to come very slightly loose that will release the pressure here and then you can just very gently squeeze that forward and out of the way the mesh underneath is is loose it just sits uh, underneath there like that in place so that's that so when you come to inspect the central compartment it'll have this plastic cover over it which is just screwed down around the perimeter you need a relatively short screwdriver just like several inches or so because obviously when the bonnet's on the car there's quite restricted clearance at the top of the engine bay here particularly for the screws at the back but assuming you get that off you will then see the blower motor underneath and one of the first things to just check is what the condition of the seal is like the compartment lid because obviously if the seal is in poor condition or hasn't been seated properly then in all likelihood is water has been coming into the compartment and that's one of the issues here is that by design there is no exit path for water that finds its way into the compartment i think mercedes just assumed that it would be sealed off and no water would come in which of course is a somewhat flawed assumption 40 50 years later but it is what it is and once you take the cover out you'll see there's not a huge amount of space around the motor and it's quite hard to tell how much corrosion is actually in the compartment. Now I know having taken this motor out that there is a lot of corrosion in there, particularly at the front where there's a lot of deterioration to the wall uh, at the bottom and it's full of holes. So what I would suggest is if you can see corrosion like that at the sides, if you can see that sort of level of corrosion with the motor in place, there's probably a lot worse going on underneath it. Obviously, the only way to know for sure is to take the motor out. Now, the motor is held in place by four studs, one at each corner. But if there is corrosion in there, you will almost certainly snap either the studs or the plastic holes uh, that hold the motor in place or both. So that's kind of what you're in for if you're going to take the motor out. And when you do take the motor out, Probably something like this is what you'll be confronted with. So 
So this is the SL shop's answer to the problem. It's essentially a complete lower part of the central compartment, which you would essentially cut out the entire center section that's corroded and weld in a completely new piece. Now, the reason this is so uh, time consuming and challenging is that before you do that, you've obviously got to remove the top scuttle panels. Now, when I first got the car, I made a bit of a cut in the top of the scuttle on the driver's side just to sort of have a better look inside the chamber. But having thought about it a bit more, the proper way to do this would be to drill out all the spot welds that hold this top layer of the scuttle on, drill those all out, which obviously would require the windscreen to come out first as well. And then once that panel's out of the way, then you have access to the deeper panels in the bulkhead, including this section of uh, the centre compartment. And then you'd be able to weld in this piece. Now, it's hardly surprising that the job uh, to have this done professionally would run into thousands and thousands of pounds. So personally on this car, I'm just a little way away from getting to the bulkhead. I've still got some work to do on the front chassis leg, uh, particularly on the passenger side now. But when I do get there, I will let you know there will be a full video covering the outer plenum chambers and how I get on with the SL Shops uh, replacement centre compartment. In the meantime though, if you like this video, do like, subscribe and look forward to more R107 restoration.